welcome to Timekeeping. This show will attempt to chronicle year-by-year -year changes to the Walt Disney World Resort, from exciting new ride openings to the minutia of a store changing names. Join us as we count down to the 50th anniversary of the Vacation Kingdom of the World. 1991 was another year of incremental expansion at Walt Disney World. While the older portions would see some minor changes, it was the resort's newest offerings that saw more dramatic additions. The Disney MGM Studios would see classic shows open, while new hotels would greet guests for the first time. These new offerings would see a variety of levels of success, from short six-week runs to 30 years of operation. On Main Street, the Emporium underwent a remodel, while the fire station was temporarily turned into a gift shop. In Frontierland, changes began in preparation of Splash Mountain. The railroad station, which closed in November of 1990, was reopened in its current location in December 1991. During that period, the railroad was not closed, instead ran in a shuttle mode forward and backwards. The original Briar Patch closed and would reopen on December 16th in its new location as part of the Splash Mountain Complex. Barely Country closed to become Prairie Outpost and Supply on February 25th. The Tri-Cornered Hat Shop was renamed the Trail Creek Hat Shop. In Tomorrowland, the Film and Glow Cart was removed, and on June 28th, Mickey's Mart became Mickey's Star Traders. As part of the 20th anniversary celebration, the Magic Kingdom received not one, but two new parades. The afternoon surprise celebration parade began on September 22nd, while Spectro Magic replaced the Main Street Electrical Parade on October 1st. Based on Disneyland's Party Gras Parade, surprise celebration featured characters in traditional Mardi Gras masks and inflatable floats. The parade began with Pinocchio characters, followed by Roger Rabbit on a float that was a giant version of himself. Stilt walkers and dancers were interspersed between all the major floats and preceded a float of Minnie in a fruit hat and a horse-drawn pineapple containing King Louie behind it. Next up was an inflatable Donald with the three caballeros riding, and Chip and Dale on a tropical island float trailing it. Next came Pluto and a steel drum band of Mardi Gras dressed characters riding a giant Pluto float. Goofy in a Hawaiian shirt was next in both normal character and giant float versions. The final float was King Mickey, featuring the mouse himself flanked by Cinderella and Snow White. Spectro Magic was the first ever replacement for the Main Street Electrical Parade at any Disney park on Earth. Fiber optics supplemented the more traditional Christmas style lights, and the synthesizer soundtrack gave way to a classical style score, more in line with the Disney animated film canon. After an introduction by Jiminy Cricket, a group of masked trumpeters or spectro men heralded the rest of the parade. The next units were spinning balls piloted by said spectro men, colorful clown looking figures that also rode a large float with a screen displaying the spectro magic name. Next came the Mickey unit, a large float that appeared to be his cape that connected to his back as he played with a plasma ball. Next, Roger Rabbit conducted a drumming Goofy and the Golden Harp from a metronome float. Chip and Dale playing a piano followed that, sliding all over the bench in a cartoonish fashion. A peacock float that flowed into a garden featuring fauna, flora, and merryweather from Sleeping Beauty followed. Illuminated dragonfly and butterfly dancers flanked the gardens. The Little Mermaid unit, led by a large fish with spinning eyes, came next. Smaller fish floats followed behind it and next came a large spinning Ursula. Ariel trailed behind on a shipwreck float with Sebastian conducting a fish orchestra with King Triton in a chariot bringing up the rear. Spinning, blinking fish came before the next unit, Fantasia. First was the Dance of the Hours with Ben Alligator spinning Hyacinth Hippo and an ostrich named Madame Upanova. More ostrich dancers accompanied a Bacchus float and next was another train float representing the Pastoral featuring the Pegasus. A giant opening and closing Chernabog float closed out the Fantasia portion. For the incredible finale, the Big Bad Wolf prowled ahead of the three little pigs. The float also featured Jacques and Gus at the helm of Cinderella and her pumpkin coach, with the Queen of Hearts walking just a few steps behind. Mary Poppins walked ahead of a carousel, with the horses replaced with fanciful animals such as frogs, roosters, and even Dumbo the Flying Elephant. 
Peter Pan, Mr. Smee, Snow White, and six of the seven dwarfs led the final unit. The Evil Queen and Captain Hook, Dopey, Pinocchio, and Geppetto, and finally Donald, Minnie Mouse, and a puppet of Jiminy Cricket closed out the parade on a lengthy triple unit float. Oh, and by the way, all of the finale units and the characters on them changed from black and white into color via a cascading effect timed perfectly to the beautiful score. Epcot Center saw little noticeable changes in 1991. However, a new Lagoon show, Surprise in the Skies, debuted September 30th to run as part of the 20th anniversary celebration. The show began with daytime fireworks, quickly followed by paragliders piloted by Mickey, Minnie, Pooh, Tigger, Chip, Dale, Pluto, and Goofy. There were also speedboats dragging kites. Large inflatable characters emerged from the rooftops of the World Showcase pavilions, Donald Duck in a sombrero and poncho in Mexico, Viking Goofy in Norway, Chip and Dale climbing each other in China, Daisy in a flower wreath in Germany, Pinocchio playing the accordion in Italy, Minnie Mouse in a kimono for Japan, Tigger in Morocco, Pluto with a beret in France, Robin Hood in the United Kingdom, Pooh in a Mountie uniform in Canada, and finally, Uncle Sam Mickey Mouse at the American Adventure. The paragliders and more dancing kites then returned with more fireworks. The 20th festivities and even the carnival theme also extended to a character show where the gang arrived via omnibus and held a Mardi Gras style celebration on World Showcase Promenade. The characters would be available to guests as a meet and greet for a few moments following the show. That kid looks awfully familiar. Here Come the Muppets would close on September 2nd at the Disney MGM Studios. However, Muppet Vision 3D would already be open by May 16th. The 3D film would be the first to utilize extensive in-theater effects, including water, bubbles, wall projections, animatronics, and live actors. The show would feature a pre-show across multiple screens, highlighting the typical Muppet sense of humor. Once in the theater, the Muppets would introduce us to their new technology, Muppet Vision. Of course, everything goes wrong, as a sentient 3D effect called Waldo is created, disrupting the show and leading to the destruction of the theater. For a deeper dive on Muppet Vision 3D, check out our multi-hour history show, Back to the Future, right here on our YouTube channel. Also in the area, the Studio Showcase attraction would open on September 29th in the building that is now Pizza Rizzo. This would feature props and costumes from different films. The Studio Pizzeria opened on June 15th, but soon became Mama Melrose on September 26th. The same day, Dinosaurs Live premiered at the Disney MGM Studios. The Sci-Fi Dine-In Theater opened on April 20th and allowed guests to dine in a car at a drive-in movie theater as clips, trailers, and ads representing science fiction of the time ran. To complete the theme at the time, guests were brought popcorn at the beginning of their meal, and as well, servers were often found on roller skates bringing the food to the table, like a car hop. Muppets on Location opened on September 16th. This allowed guests to meet the Muppets while the Electric Mayhem played music. Across the park, the Soundstage restaurant underwent its first major theme change to coincide with the opening of Beauty and the Beast. The Theater of the Stars saw Hollywood's Pretty Woman open on September 24th, only to close on November 3rd. Now, when I say Pretty Woman, you might think of the Disney-owned film starring Julia Roberts, but in fact, the show was a celebration of pretty women throughout the history of Hollywood. The short-lived show featured Roger Rabbit attempting to recruit other Disney characters to work for Maroon Studios. The show was quickly replaced by Beauty and the Beast live on stage on November 22nd, the day the film was released in theaters. The show was much the same as it is today, a short retelling of the film focusing mainly on the musical numbers. However, the order of the show was completely different. Oh, and there were these giant costume bat people. The show opened with Be Our Guest rather than All Songs in Order. Port Orleans opened on May 17th, but only the section now known as the French Quarter. 432 rooms were available on opening day, though it reached its full 1,008 rooms soon after. The resort featured the Dubloon Lagoon Pool, and guests could dine at the full-service restaurant Bomb Famille's Cafe Table Service Restaurant, or at the Sasagula Floatworks and Food Factory Food Court. They could shop at the Jackson Square Gifts and Desires. The Disney Vacation Club Resort, now Old Key West, was the first DVC resort to open on December 20th, 1991. The accommodations included kitchen facilities and a laundry room. 
The rooms were designed in a Key West theme. Olivia's Cafe Restaurant and the Conk Flats General Store were available to guests. Over at Disney's Contemporary Resort, the new convention center opened, making its Fantasia Ballroom the largest at Walt Disney World. The lobby and entrance were altered as part of this expansion. 1991 was a landmark year as it was the 20th anniversary of the Vacation Kingdom of the World. But 1992 would continue the party as a late arrival would make a big splash. Well, time flies. Enjoying your jump from time to time with us? Well, please hit that like button and subscribe to support this show and others. You can also join the WDWNT Inner Globe Society for exclusive content at patreon.com slash WDWNT. If you're looking for the perfect gear to celebrate 50 years of Walt Disney World, you can shop apparel, accessories, and more at carouselofproducts.com. We'll see you real soon here on Timekeeping.